Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Hello there, brothers and sisters. Good to be back with you here on Points of Light Radio. I recently sat down with a gentleman named Lyle Azuf. Mr. Azuf is the former president of the Benevolent Protected Order of Elks Lodge Number no. 11 in Edmonton, Alberta. He's also the past president of the Grand Lodge of Elks here in Alberta. Now, for those who view who don't know, the Benevolent Protected Order of Elks was founded in 1868 in New York City and is currently headquartered in Chicago. One of the qualifications for membership is one must believe in the supreme being, very common in fraternalism. You also must pass their, the rest of their vetting process, sit down and for an interview with them and so on. Now, the Elks has had and does have some prominent members of society in its ranks, among them, American presidents Warren G. Harding, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, and Gerald Ford. Now, as I often ask you, how is it that we know that some of these gentlemen I just mentioned, these presidents I just mentioned, were Freemasons, but people also seem blissfully unaware of their membership in the Elks Lodge? Prime example, Warren G. Harding, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, and Gerald Ford. It's a known fact we're Freemasons, but a lot of people don't remember their membership in the Elks, as well as some other organizations. Among sports figures in this, there's there's a long list with the Elks of the people who belonged to uh, the Elks, but uh, Babe Ruth was an Elk, and it's known that Eli Manning, former quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts and Denver Broncos, is also a member of the Elks Lodge. And like I keep saying, This is just to name a few. I'm sure if you looked, as I keep saying, you'd find Canadians as well as others on that list. But as I often say, why should I do all the explaining here? Let's take you to that interview with Mr. Azouf. And as I always ask you, are you still looking for light? Are you still hungry for knowledge? And just trim your lamp and follow me. Okay, Mr. Osuf, welcome to Points of Light Radio. Thank you. Oh, thank you much. <laughs> you are a member of the Benevolent Protected Order of Elks. Why don't you tell my listeners and viewers about yourself? Uh, myself, okay. I can tell you that I've been a member for 30 years. Okay. Uh, I've been president of our lodge uh, three times, I think it is, in the last 30 years. Wow. And I've also been a provincial president of the Alberta Elks Association. Okay. And why don't you tell my listeners and viewers about the Elks? What, what, exactly, uh, what, what exactly should they know about the organization? What is there to know? What is there to know about the organization? Well... We're a nonprofit organization and we raise funds to help children in need up to the age of 18. Uh, Basically, we help children uh, hearing and speech problems and we'll also help children who need other uh, monetary help. Okay. Well, what drew you to the Elks? What... uh... What brought you to the Elks? Uh, My wife belonged to an organization that used to be affiliated with them, and I went to two or three of their parties, and uh, they invited me to join, and I thought they were a pretty uh, good bunch of guys. Uh, You know, we had a few, uh, like, Christmas party, uh, New Year's party, stuff like that. I got to know a few of them, and I decided to join. 
And uh, I had really no idea what they were about when I joined, other than they were the Elks. And uh, I really have enjoyed it over the years. Really? And what exactly, what, what, what exactly would you say uh, the Elks have done for you? Well, for one thing, uh, I was kind of shy about uh, speaking. And now, after being in the Elks for this many years, I have, I have stood up and talked in front of a, quite a amount of people. Actually, uh, something I would never thought I would have had the guts, per se, to do before. And uh, I really kind of enjoyed it. Uh, they brought me along to the point where I could stand up and speak on anything now, as long as I have the information in front of me. And uh, I think that's a real positive. And you say you were, you were uh, the president of your lodge, and you were also president of uh, the Alberta Elks for a while. What exactly do you do as president of, shall we say, a lodge? Well, basically, you're there to run the meeting, keep a decorum, and... Uh, you know, bring up boats, uh, take care of stuff like that, help run the, the the building. Of course, we do own our own building here in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have been in Edmonton since uh, 1914. Wow. Edmonton number 11 has been here for that long. So we've been here for a while. What about uh, president of the Alberta Elks? What, what exactly did you do there? Basically, what you do there is you, you travel around the province and you go to different uh, lodges that you make arrangements to visit them on their meeting night and, and uh, make a report as to how they're doing and, and bring it back to the Alberta Elks Association, uh, the members there. And if lodges are ha having a little problem or anything like that, we can usually come up with some kind of a solution like the, the provincial would come up with some type of a solution to help them out one way or the other. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the Elks themselves. Do they have a degree system? Uh, basically, uh, we have chairs that we go through. Uh, first, second, third, vice president, and president, of course, secretary, treasurer, and uh, a guard, inner guard. Uh, Basically, uh, we open our meetings with, with our ch chairs basically, uh, whenever we have a meeting. Lately, we haven't because of this COVID thing. Yeah. We haven't been meeting. So I think we're probably going to be out of practice opening, but we're going to give her a good try. <laughs> but yeah, but do you have a degree system like, say, the Freemasons at first, second, third degree, stuff like that? Do you have that? Or is, you just, just, is there just an initiatory degree? No, it's just basically what... I just told you about the president. Of okay. the, and then, of course, the provincial is the same. You start at the bottom and you work your way up to be the president. Go okay. through your, your, all your chairs to get to be president and learn how the provincial is run while you're doing it. Okay. Are you also a member of the Royal Purple? No. Uh, Royal Purple is a separate entity. We do, we do have... Uh, Royal Purple Elks now, they, the Royal Purple split away from us in 2014 okay. and started their own Canadian Royal Purple. So we really don't have anything to do with them, but some of the ladies decided they wanted to be Elks yet. So they, they started Royal Purple Elks in different, different lodges. I'm not too sure how many there are now, but there were uh, quite a few, about 16, 17 different lodges back in 2014. Are women allowed into the Elks itself, though? Absolutely, they are, yes. They're equal. We're all equal members. So what would you say the makeup of your Elks Lodge is? Uh, women, young, old men, what uh, older men, middle-aged, what would you say that is? Uh, I would say we're all old. <laughs> okay. Everybody... Well, I shouldn't say all, but I don't think there's anyone in our lodge that's much under 60. Okay. And how many women are in the lodge, would you say the ratio is there? Uh, there's five, six, about seven out of 20. Okay, you have about 20 members in your lodge, right? Approximately, yeah. Okay. 
So if you could say anything to someone who was thinking of joining the Elks, what would it be? Well, I would say if you really uh, like to see a child with a smile on their face after you've helped them, whether it's uh, hearing or speech, uh, the, the, basically just, just the fact that you've helped a child in need, I say you get a real good feeling out of that. And that's one of the reasons, besides the camaraderie that we have amongst ourselves, uh, basically that's why I joined. I watched a couple of things happen before I joined and I thought, gee, you know, that, that guys really looked like they had fun doing that. So I thought this might be a good idea. I guess it probably has been because I've been sticking around for 30 years. <laughs> And you still enjoy it? You still enjoy being there? I enjoy it, yeah. Sometimes it makes you wonder, why am I doing this? I'm too old for this. But hey, in the end, it, it really helps. Well, Mr. Ozuf, I appreciate your time today. And uh, all the best to you and number 11 Elks Lodge. Thank you, Stan. Thank I you really appreciate time. this. Uh, I hope a lot of people get to see it. And maybe we'll get some return on it from members. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Well, Zoof, brothers and sisters, how do you feel about the Elks? You, you learn anything here? I think on a personal level, as I said, looking back to my introduction, I named those presidents. I don't know how we could miss that part of U.S. history. Um, I, I, really, I really think, given what Mr. Azouf talked about during, during our conversation, that it would be a shame to see these organizations completely fade out of our society or to lose that part of our history. Um, looking back on what he found, the fellowship and the friendship within the organization, the camaraderie he felt, you know, and the, and the, and, and the personal experience he's had, how he, he really believes it has enriched his life. And I have heard that from many people who have been in the Elks and the Freemasons and the Oddfellows and some of these other organizations, that it has enriched their life and brought a different level of meaning into their life, belonging to one of these fraternal organizations. And I might also add this, I don't think I'm done with the Elks or any, any of these other organizations that I've covered here, I think this will be an ongoing thing that, you know, I will definitely have another member of the Elks on to, you know, dig that hole a little deeper and, and take us a little further into the organization. I think that would be wonderful. So if you're watching this and you are in the Elks, hey, reach out, right? You know how to get a hold of me. It's in the details section of this particular segment. I'm going to, you know, leave ways of getting hold of me. But I'm afraid I'm just going to have to uh, leave it here. But before I go, I, as always, I want to remind you that this podcast is available on both YouTube and Spreaker. Please share, like, and subscribe when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. You can follow Points of Light Radio on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash points of light radio. My Twitter handle is at PO Light Radio. You can see the link to my Spotify channel there. You can see the link to my Points of Light store where you can go and buy merchandise and rep represent this podcast, spread the word. And I also want to point out, as usual, that Points of Light Radio is available to advertise your store if you sell fraternal merchandise or any other kind. I'm quite willing to uh, advertise for you here on Points of Light Radio. I will do a quick read of your, or your store. 
during my my segment for 25 Canadian. And I will also leave a link to your store in the details section of that segment. But I'm afraid this is where we will part for now. But brothers and sisters, until we meet again, just step into the light.